A busy day as Iowans recover from yesterday's storms. 10 million acres of Iowa's crops damaged, according to state leaders. For a little perspective on that, that is twice the size of Massachusetts. And now Iowa farmers are worried about their fall harvest and the financial implications. But first, an update on Iowa's power outages. Hundreds of thousands of Iowans are still without power. In the Des Moines metro alone, more than 85,000 mid-American customers have no electricity. Now, everyone wants to know when the power Power will be back on and why it's taking so long. We spoke to a leader with Mid American Energy today. She explained because there's damage to transmitters and large lines on interstates, it could be a few days until your power comes back. Um, and working on those big areas, transmission and distribution lines to get those restored, and then kind of coming into those neighborhoods to get the um, you know, the lines back to each house and in into neighborhoods. So um, in many cases, tree crews have to come in and um, clean up the tree damage before our trucks can even get to some of those lines. Meanwhile, Governor Kim Reynolds has issued a disaster declaration for these 13 counties. Polk and Warren are not included. The governor clarified today that counties must request a disaster declaration. Otherwise, the state cannot issue one. These counties will now get state assistance in the form of resources or grants for individuals. I'll take a look at this view from above the Des Moines Buccaneers Arena in Urbandale. The roof damaged from those strong winds of yesterday's storms. Crews have been out there for hours cleaning up and assessing how and what to rebuild or to tear down. Well, we are Iowa's most accurate weather forecast sites like those at the Bucks Arena, corn stalks blown over and these right here in Sheldahl, all caused by a weather phenomenon called a derecho. Now, Chief Meteorologist Brad Edwards joins us now to help us understand what exactly a derecho is. <laughs> it's something often called an inland hurricane Yeah. and how it becomes so dangerous. And it's also become a household word this last 24 hours. It has, back. it has. And I, I actually looked it up. It, it, the word is actually a Spanish word. It comes from the word meaning straight, basically straight line winds. And that's why we call it derecho. And basically you have to have certain criteria met to be called a derecho. We have straight line winds from thunderstorms all the time, but this is an organized area, a complex of thunderstorms that goes hundreds of miles, has to go more than 250. This one went, I think, close to a thousand miles. I mean, it went a long way. It went from basically Nebraska to Ohio and continuously causing severe gusts. It did that too. And then you have to have including some 75 or greater mile per hour gusts. It did that a lot. So it met the criteria. It's basically just a very organized complex of thunderstorms tapping into mid-level winds and bringing them down to the surface and causing a lot of destruction. One of the biggest storms we've had in the in central Iowa here uh, because of the vastness of it, because tornadoes cause more damage to a certain area, but they just don't cause it in a widespread area. Pretty quiet out there now. It's going to stay that way. We've got some isolated showers and storms up north, and that's where the best chance for rain will be the next couple of days. Severe weather, not a problem here, maybe out to the west. So we'll talk more about your forecast coming up. Brad, thank you. And there is a good chance you have major branches in your yard from yesterday's storms. The incredible wind is snapping them just like a toothpick. Cities now start the work of cleaning up those streets, but they also soon start in picking up your branches. Each city differs in the requirements for this. So find out when your city will start the pickup process and what you need to do to make that happen by heading to weareiowa.com. We have a running list of what you need to know to make the cleanup easier on yourself. More than 24,000 people in Ames still don't have any electricity. That includes customers of the city's electric and Alliant Energy. This was the scene there yesterday, but as Local 5's chief photojournalist Don Schmidt shows us, the cleanup has already begun. Well, we've had a lot of trees, a lot of tree damage. We've been here 51 years, and this is the worst it's ever been. And right now you have no power. No power. Using flashlights and batteries and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard three big whomps on top of the roof. So I figured either branches or a tree or something fell. We're down in southern Missouri at Table Rock Lake when this all happened. And our neighbors called us. We just drove down there yesterday. Our neighbors called us and told us it happened. So we left at 5 o'clock this morning to drive home to try to clean up the mess. Everything uh, kind of hit us by surprise yesterday, like I, I imagine it hit everybody in Iowa. 
I think the community uh, deserves a pat on the back. As soon as the storm was over, we were going around and seeing the neighbors and everybody out trying to clear debris and get everything off the road. We have uh, our phones don't even work, like nothing on the phone works, no Wi-Fi, nothing. So we've just been playing uh, bags, just playing outside games and just trying to make the best of it. Well, I just walked in the house and it must have been WI that was on, <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> so you have power back. We have power. I like to hear that. And as you continue to recover, we have tips on keeping you safe as many of you still have no power, like how to keep your refrigerator cold and when your food is no longer safe to eat. Check out those tips at weareiowa.com. And just this past hour, another 14 counties with a disaster proclamation from the governor. Farmers say they haven't seen anything like this. Many fields are completely leveled. Local 5's Rachel Droz spoke to farmers in Greene County who are still surveying their damage. This just went on and on, and everything, everything is <laughs> makes an old farmer cry, I'm afraid. Roy Bardol has been farming for decades, and never before has he seen anything like this. But I don't know how we'll ever get it in the combine. According to the Iowa Department of Agriculture, early estimates show 33% of Iowa's crop got damaged. Early estimates, and again, these are early estimates, are that 10 million crop acres have been impacted by the storms. Roy and his son, Tim Bardol, have 2,500 acres of farmland in Greene County, which is about 50 miles northwest of Des Moines. The area, like many places in Iowa, hit hard by Monday's storm. It's been a tough couple years, to be totally honest with you. It, it's just sometimes it feels like one more nail in the coffin, so we're... You know, it, it's the point we're definitely just trying to survive out here and your hope next year is going to be better. And last year I said that and, you know, this is what I'm looking at now. Right now, Tim estimates it'll cost the farm between $500,000 and $750,000. We'll probably be losing two, three hundred dollars an acre. But those are just estimates. So, Only time will yeah. tell if the crop is permanently damaged or if it'll come back. And as for harvest, well, Tim says it's likely going to be a long, slow effort. There's going to be a lot of, of corn that just can't be picked up and it will still will be left in the field. Rachel Droz, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa. Now, if you are a farmer impacted by the storms, whether it's your grain silo, crops, or machines destroyed, here's what you need to do. You want to document, make sure you report damages to your local farm service agency is what we always recommend. So get your information to those folks, document. If you have any kind of crop insurance, check with your homeowner's insurance, your farm policy. Make sure you're exploring every avenue where there might be resources available for you. Secretary of Ag Mike Neg is assessing damage to Iowa farmers' crops, too. He said on a call with reporters, right now it's too early to tell the financial impact, but he says it is significant. Neg says next week will be very telling how much crop was actually lost. In a state where agriculture plays so much into our economy, Neg says the economic impact will be substantial. I'll stay updated on how yesterday's storms may continue to impact you. You can do that by using your phone to scan this QR code and download the We Are Iowa app. Then you need to turn on notifications so you'll get the latest update sent straight to your phone. The storm also impacting the state's coronavirus website. This is the notification saying due to the storms, some Iowans in long term care facilities or at homes may be transferred to hospitals or other health care facilities. It says that may cause a fluctuation in hospitalization data in the short term. The coronavirus pandemic is creating some difficulties in helping Iowans during the storm. Shelters usually are set up within hours, but bringing all those people together isn't safe during the pandemic. The governor says efforts are ongoing to reach everyone. We have to be mindful of that as we're providing them the necessary resources that they need uh, during the power outages. But we continue to work with local governments, to work with our emergency managers, to work with our local public health officials, all coordinated through Homeland Security with the various agencies that I just outlined uh, to make sure that we're getting Iowans the services that they need during these difficult times. Many public buildings and cities hardest hit are not open to the public. So what would usually be a good space to charge your phone or recoup with family isn't an option for some. 
but one place opening its doors to those who need a place to go, the Wellmark YMCA downtown Des Moines. The YMCA of Greater Des Moines says the community is welcome for a hot shower and to charge your phone and electronics anytime today and tomorrow between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. This goes for anyone regardless of being a member or not. They say, do say to bring your own towel and to please wear a mask. With hundreds of thousands of Iowans still without power, many of them have no means of seeing this newscast and getting the information they need. So reach out to them, whether that's through the phone, if they are lucky enough to have one charged, or any other mean to make sure that they are safe and have the latest information to help them recover.